All right, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, just something short and quick, this. Um, this is my Panasonic 3DO uh, CD um, logic board. I don't know you can see a bit of corrosion just there next to that cap. Uh, and if you look at the cap, can you see um, it's kind of standing off the board like the underneath of the bunk is sort of pressing down. So I think it's leaked. Um, the, all the other caps look alright on here, it's just this 100 here, I suspect some of these might need replacing as well because you can see they stand off the board a little bit, there's no signs of any leakage around there. So I'm going to swap out this one in the first instance, I'm getting some read errors again. Um, I think that's what it is, it's been in storage for a while, it's not used it. So um, yeah, I'll remove that cap, just clean up around there with a bit of uh, solder uh, flux and some desolder braid, um, reassemble it and test it I think. Well, I think I had two issues there actually. Um, that cap definitely needed replacing. Um, I measured on my meter, it's not measuring the right value, and it's clearly leaked. Uh, I'll just turn this down a bit. Just in fact, I'll mute that. Um, so the other thing I had to do is just tweak the laser a little bit, because it was reading um, pressed it, you know, um, CDRs perfectly. As you can see, I've got space up there, that's the game that's in there now. Um, but it wasn't reading original media, it was really, really, really struggling. Um, now, this is the first game I've got that's on original media for, the, for this system, so it's no surprise really because it had a new laser um, ages back. So um, I'll just show you the adjustment I made actually. If I just uh, eject the disc, I'll switch it off, just turn it around. Um, and it's easy to turn it around because you can see the pot then. If I just zoom in a little bit here, so from the back, um, hopefully you should be able to see uh, down here. If I just touch it, that's the pot there. And the little notch was pointing up, sort of like that, towards the, this point here, you know. And all I've done is put the screwdriver in and just turn it a tiny bit uh, counter-clockwise. So that the, the notch, instead of pointing upwards like that, it's just like, it's like that. It's, just, it's moved just like literally by a degree or two. Um, I tried it the other way first. That made CDRs, you know, original discs, not CDRs, original media here, printed media, worse. It wouldn't read it at all. Um, the laser was actually coming across. If I close this now, what was happening is that the laser was coming across to here, it was like it, it trying to bob up and down, nowhere near the disc, and then going back under, then come back out and doing the same things if it couldn't see the disc at all. So, uh, yeah, that was what it needed, like, say, from this angle here, counterclockwise, um, just by a degree or so. And then uh, printed media is now working fine. Uh, and I think CDRs are as well. We'll give that another test now. Let's just switch them on. Just make sure that boots. And then we'll try uh, my copied version of Space Hulk here. Back up, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, that's coming up okay. Show the screen. See. Uh, and it's like, it's one of these, it's a bit like night and day, you know, when it's not working, it doesn't work at all. You just will not read the disc whatsoever. But that tiny, tiny adjustment there, I had to put that back on again. Uh, the spindle height obviously is critical as well. I've had to play around with the spindle height a little bit here. A trial and error. Again, um, if you've got a scope onto it and you have the service manual and stuff, obviously you could dial it in perfectly. I think that's working. Yeah, put it on the screen. That's working as well. So, yeah. So, I'm not sure if I've, I've probably decreased the voltage, I would think, because you tend to find you need to increase it usually for CDR media. So, if anything, I might extend the laser life a little bit by having decreased it to, you know, to use press discs. So, um, but I'll do some more extensive testing, it's just interesting the things I missed. Uh, something else I'll point out, I'll just switch this off, something else I'll point out here. Um, I swapped out, the, there's a cap just under there you can't see, 1000 microphone. That hadn't been swapped out, I'll swap that out as well. Um, and the other thing I noticed when I disassembled it just to inspect the board and stuff again, this connector here, um, pretty loose, you know, the contact, it's not doesn't. It's not snug, it's not really, really tight. Uh, it is now, because what I've done is just bend the pins out slightly, but also clean the pins up, um, just with a tiny bit of um, sandpaper there, not, it's really lightly abrasive, it's just got the oxidisation off, because there was little black marks where you could see what it had been, um, you know, not making a good connection and then oxidising, but that, yeah, that feels a lot better now, so those are things to check as well, you know. Um, Strictly speaking, I should have fully recapped this board, but what I did do last time is I took pretty much loads of the caps off, all the one microphone ones tested them, they were all pretty much okay, there was no ESR problems, um, and they were measuring exact values, so they were okay. And I don't think the 1000 was the issue, but I do think uh, when I first took this apart, 
um, those the, the, there's probably about six caps on the CD PCB that are really low profile. I would recommend you replace those, and I do think at some point I'm probably going to need to go back in and replace the other five because I've only done the one that had definitely leaked. The other ones, at some time in future, will de will probably leak also. I think. Well, what's amazing is this uh, 3D has been in storage for about uh, I don't know seven or eight months. As you can see, I managed to load my save games for Alone in the Dark. No problems at all. Um, I found that remarkable, really. It's kept the save games that long. Um, mind you, I guess there's only going to be a few microamps or something uh, drawn by the SRAM. Maybe a bit more than that. As you can see, it's working perfectly. Um, I perhaps didn't explain very well at the start of this video what the actual fault was. Um, and it was, once it had warmed up, it was struggling to read, um, you know, original discs, you know, pressed media. Um, and that was what got me thinking about that cap, because I did remember seeing that corrosion um, previously, actually, and I just didn't do anything about it at the time. Uh, I did check the cap, and the cap looked okay. But I do believe it was that cap, that was what was causing me the uh, read problems there. But also, um, as I described uh, a few minutes ago, I did have to adjust the laser voltage a little bit as well, um, and I do think I've reduced it. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.